hey guys welcome back to another video i know it's been a while since i posted an art video um and to be honest the only reason why i haven't been doing it is because i just i haven't been in a very arty mood like you know you have to be in that mood to just create art i haven't had one of those moods in a while but today i was like I'm in one of those moods so let's try something different first off hello to all the new subscribers and if you're watching this and you're not subscribed please press the subscribe button because that tells me that you guys enjoy my videos and that really encourages me to make more so please subscribe and also thank you to all the new subscribers like hello welcome to this channel um if you haven't seen my art previous videos already then i make a lot of textured art videos so usually you guys know i'm kind of dabbling in textured art and thank you to everyone who's given me a lot of tips a lot of advice um i'm still learning myself so there's a lot of things that i don't know um so yeah thank you to all the like art novices out there you guys have really been helpful in sharing your tips and tricks so that has been great thank you um today we're going to be doing a different kind of textured art there's something that i've seen and it's taken me a while to realize that it's actually fabric art so what it is is it's a canvas and there's kind of like this 3d pattern on these pieces of art that I've seen around and it's kind of like I really want to do that so I did a bit of research myself and there's multiple ways of doing it there's never really one way of doing a certain type of art but there's two ways that I have kind of researched into and I think I want to try both so I'm going to try and do both so basically you get a canvas and you get some old fabric that you have or the fabric and then you kind of put it on the canvas and you kind of secure it and you lock it in with either plaster or pva glue and then you can paint on top of it and it will come out to be these really nice 3d looking pieces of art so i thought i'm going to try it um the two ways i'm going to try it is with plaster so i have just about enough plaster for one small canvas i was ideally going to stretch it across two but i don't have enough plaster for that so I'm going to do one of these um, in plaster and then the other one I'm going to try the PVA way. So at least you can kind of see the differences in two, um, uh, the differences side by side and you can kind of see the different outcomes of both. And for me as well, because I really want to make a 3D piece of art on a bigger scale, but I just... I need to know that the fabric's going to hold into the canvas and not fall off. So I will have to film this video over the course of two days because I have to let them dry. Um, fine, I have to do that with all my textured videos anyways. But so the first one I'm going to do is with plaster. And the kind of plaster that I'm using is plaster of Paris. And basically I'm going to mix it up with water. Um, I'll just show you guys. Oh wait, sorry, so I should detail what equipment you need for this plaster version. So you need a canvas, you'll need fabric, you'll need plaster. I'm using plaster of Paris, um, but you can experiment with other plasters. Um, you'll need a container to mix your plaster in with water. You'll need a staple gun and some paint. And I think that's it. Or and this is optional i think um you need some like fabric adhesive spray to spray on afterwards but i think that's optional i think also for everyone asking on my first video whether the plaster has upheld and whether it's chipped or not because i don't seal my paintings i should if i'm selling them but if they're just for myself then i i i really don't go i don't do that extra step um but it's good if you do but however you don't have to so here you can see it doesn't it doesn't it nothing's crumbling like it hasn't fallen off or anything and it's still really good so this is just if anyone's wondering because a lot of comments were like oh how was it did it start crumbling and anything or anything nothing like it's it's fine it's perfectly fine seal it if you do great if you don't then it will still be fine so this is my cloth i think it's linen or it's muslin one of the two basically i had this for i was trying to make bags out of it but it you know 
if it was meant to happen then it would have happened by now so i'm just going to use this piece of fabric um if you don't have something like this like if you don't want to buy then probably like an old bed sheet or like old pillow covers or just like an old sheet for something i think you can use that i'm just cutting this in half because it's way too big for my canvas size Okay, so before you start, I think it's good that you kind of, kind of practice maybe the, the kind of scrunch that you want. Um, I feel like I may have cut this a little bit too, too small, which doesn't give me much freedom to kind of scrunchy scrunch, but it's fine. Okay, I think I kind of like something like this. I think that's nice to be kind of like in the middle of it. Or you could do something like, you know where it's kind of like stretched out across and it's something like this. Oh, why did I cut it so small? Something like this. Okay, it doesn't look great now, so maybe we'll just start. Okay, so I have my plaster of Paris and basically it's, I think it's one part plaster and then two part water. And you want it to be quite, um, quite watery because if it's too thick then that gives you very little time. I think that's too much plaster, you know. It gives you very little time to kind of make your patterns on the sheet. All right, this looks good. And this board, it has been primed already. It's already been primed with um, gesso twice. So if any of you guys are wondering, so you just submerge this in. I should probably take my ring off. So you submerge this in. This is so messy. Ah, okay, ring it. <laughs> okay, ring it and then start to make your pattern. You can always like fold it over the edges as well if there's too much, which I think is better for that clean edge look. What you can do also is kind of like, oh my gosh, this actually looks kind of nice. I think I might just leave it like this with that bit there. Wait, actually, maybe I'll just cover it. Okay, so I have these pots, which I'm going to use to stand the canvas on top of. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to use pegs and just kind of clamp it along the sides. Stand up, have a look from afar. I actually don't like it now, so maybe like this. Hopefully there's too much ruching happening here. More pegs. I need more pegs. Alright, I think I'm kind of happy with that. No, I'm not. Yes. Okay, so whilst I leave that to dry over here, the next technique is using PVA. So this is the PVA that I actually bought for my stoneware to just to seal, um, like water repellent, but you can use any other PVA that you have. And apparently this is a sealer, which I think is um, good.
great to go over your acrylics or your plaster art as well. So I actually watched um, Asia Contour, her video on this. So I'll be trying out her technique because this is like the simplest PVA fabric art method that I found. So you just apply it all over your canvas. Next thing is to grab your cloth and to soak it in water. Wring it out. Just move that there because I know what I'm like. And then I think you just kind of do your thing again. Definitely cut this a bit too short. Okay, I think this is good. And of course you need to stand back and have a look at it. Yeah, I think it's nice. Okay, so then you get your brush again. And you just kind of go over, you just kind of like go over the fabric. To be honest, I find that when it's bubbled like this, it's really nice. But then when I put the PVA on top, it just flattens it. So what I'm going to do is kind of just like go over it all in PVA. Again, I may be completely wrong, but I'm doing this so you guys don't have to. And we can learn from Grace's mistakes. But I just think if you go over it one by one, it will kind of lose the airiness underneath. So let's just do it like this. Okay, I think that's enough. You don't want to drown it. So then you just kind of lift things back up again and just reshape it. I think we're done. Um, I'm now going to leave it to dry for about a day. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. So it's the next morning and they have both pretty much dried um the pva one is still a little bit like tacky it's a bit stodgy um but the plaster one the plaster one is nice i don't know if you can just like hear it it's all it's gone really hard and it's kind of it's really set to the canvas um i was quite worried that it wasn't actually enough plaster but it seemed to have turned out really nicely um as for the pva there's like all these little bubbles here and i think because the sheet was so wet with water um and then we added the glue on top i think it would have been hard to get the bubbles out anyway so this is something that has happened with the pva side versus the plaster side um i'm gonna paint over it and see how they both turn out however i'd say after like four hours this was kind of already dried it was like ready to go ready to paint but i wanted to give them both enough time to dry um and this one was still quite wet after like four or five hours so even today it's still not fully dried ish like you can still feel it's a little bit damp you can use a hair dryer i have seen some people use a hair dryer to like dry them um, but I'm just gonna paint over them and then do like a side-by-side -side comparison So I couldn't get a staple gun in time. So I did have to use my normal stapler just for 
as a temporary fix until my stapler gun does arrive um this is just so i can like hold it in place while i paint it Oh my god, this one's so much more easier to paint. Guys, what kind of music do you like listening to when you're painting or creating art or drawing? Like, is it piano? Do you like to listen to jazz? Let me know in the comments below. I, I personally um like to listen to music with no words for example i love classic piano music and sometimes um i like listening to like old chinese songs as well because i find like chinese music although they are singing words it's kind of like there's a kind of like a melody to it and plus i actually don't understand mandarin so when i hear it it just sounds like it sounds like a tune to me and so when i listen to songs with words i feel like i'm using too much of my brain to kind of like understand what they're saying and do you know what i mean i, I don't feel at peace when i'm trying to decipher what this person is saying in english or if they're talking about this or that like i feel like it takes me away from the moment whilst I'm painting so yeah let me know what you guys like to listen to maybe we should create like a playlist like an artist playlist oh and then everyone can kind of like mm, but everyone's got kind of mixed taste so I don't know how that would work out if you guys want me to create a playlist of what I listen to on Spotify let me know so I've noticed when you paint, it might be quite difficult to kind of see where you've already painted. So I realize a trick, if you hold it up towards the light, these kind of areas like here, these kind of pockets that don't have paint on it, it will be more, it will like probably let more light in compared to somewhere like here where you can see I've painted. And then there's just pockets like up here where you can see I haven't painted either. So that might be a good trick if you want to see where you painted and where you haven't, particularly if your um, piece is white. So this is first coat. I'm going to do another coat because there's places like here, like you couldn't see when you're painting, but then when you put it up and then in the light, you can see where I haven't painted. So I'm going to give it another coat. Uh, this is the PVA side and this is the plaster side. The PVA side, I did the mistake of leaving it on the floor so everything from my carpet has like kicked up and there's a lot of dust on it you can't actually see in the camera but it is kind of nasty so I'm thinking of maybe just like spray painting it with acrylic at the end just to cover everything this is the plaster one the plaster one was much easier to paint because I don't know what's going on with the, the PVA one but I feel like it wasn't I don't know i feel like it, it requires a lot more paint versus the plaster one it's kind of just like painting over card so this is a second coat i think i may even need a third just to kind of go over the creases when you're painting it you really do need to spend time on it because there's just so many creases you know obviously depending on your design but all in all i'm actually really happy with it i think it's gonna look really nice like just against a nice white wall i hope you guys enjoyed that video if you really enjoyed it then give me a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed to my channel already please do so because this really tells me that you guys enjoy my videos and i will be encouraged to do more again any tips just let me know in the comments below there's probably loads of people who go through the comments and look for tips as well so you're not just advising me only and i think that's it for today i'll see you guys in the next video